In this video, we explain the purpose of Wi-Fi, become familiar with the components required for wireless networking, and look at how wireless networks are secured. At the end of the day, all computing devices are connected together to form networks in one of two broad ways, either wired, for example, fiber optic, copper cables and ethernet, or wireless, for example, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, RFID. Wi-Fi provides a wireless local area network or a LAN based on international standards. As the name suggests, it allows us to easily connect different computing devices to a network wirelessly. Wireless networks tend to have lower overall bandwidth from wired connections and security is also more of a concern. However, it's an incredibly popular choice especially for home networks, as there's an ever-increasing number of home devices using wireless methods of communication. It also avoids the need to run lots of cables through the home, which is undesirable for many people. Wireless networks use electromagnetic radiation to transmit data between two points. We think of radio frequencies as channels. Wi-Fi operates in the same way. Here, we see a typical example of showing how various frequencies are set to different Wi-Fi channels. Devices on the same channel can communicate with each other. Each channel has a range of 22 MHz. This means the channel ranges overlap slightly. For example, channel 6 bleeds into channels 5 and 7. Two key components are required for wireless networking a wireless access point, and a wireless network adapter. A wireless access point is a device that creates a wireless local area network, or a WLAN, usually in a home or office building. It connects to a wired router, switch or a hub via an Ethernet cable, and projects a Wi-Fi signal within a designated area. For example, if a school wants to enable Wi-Fi access and reception, but doesn't have a router within range, it can install a wireless access point near the front desk and run an ethernet cable through the ceiling to a server room. Wi-Fi range is limited and easily interrupted by various construction materials. So most businesses use multiple wireless access points before coverage. A wireless network adapter is a device that enables other devices to connect to a wireless network. Its primary purpose is to facilitate wireless internet connectivity and network communication, eliminating the need for physical cables. Wireless network adapters can be built into devices like laptops, tablets and smartphones or external. External adapters often connect via USB ports, while internal ones are integrated into the device's motherboard or attached via PCI slots in desktop computers. These adapters allow devices to communicate with wireless access points, enabling internet access and network functionality. Wireless networks are identified by a unique Service Set Identifier, or SSID, which must be used by all devices that want to connect. It can be set to automatically broadcast to any wireless device within range. When broadcasting to any device within range, there's the potential for unwanted devices to gain access to the network. For this reason, it's important to secure wireless networks. There are several steps you can take to help protect a wireless network. An SSID can be set automatically, but you can also set it yourself. You can set the SSID to hidden to make it harder to detect. The SSID can be protected with a password. So even if it is found, devices won't be able to gain access to the wireless network without the password. Strong encryption can be used for transmitting data across the network. And you can even go as far as creating a whitelist. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What is required for wireless networking? And what steps can be taken to secure a wireless network? Well, that's technically all you need to know for the exam. But if you'd like to know about a few other very modern and relevant forms of wireless communication, 
pop your pen down and listen to the rest of the video. Wi-Fi might be the most well-known form of wireless connectivity, but it's not the only one. Others you may use without even realising it are Bluetooth, RFID and NFC and Zigbee. Bluetooth is very short range and it's ideal for connecting personal devices. It's used for things like connecting a wireless keyboard to a computer or wireless headphones to a phone. NFC is a method of wireless data transfer that detects and enables technology in very close proximity, less than 10 centimeters, to communicate without an internet connection. NFC evolved from the radio frequency identification RFID technology. An NFC chip operates as one part of a wireless link. Once it's activated by another chip, small amounts of data between the two devices can be transferred when they're held a few centimeters from each other. No pairing code is necessary to link up, and it uses chips that run on very small amounts of energy. Many mobile phones, payment cards, and security ID badges now use NFC technology. Zigbee is a communication method created by the Zigbee Alliance. It's used for two-way communication between sensors and control systems. With a range of around 10 to 100 meters, it is a short-range communication standard like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Zigbee only supports the transfer of simple data, e.g. from sensors. It has a maximum transfer rate of around 250 kilobits per second, and it's ideal for applications that require low power consumption, cost, and data usage. Here is a summary table showing the four main types of wireless technology and their main features.